In this video lesson, you will learn how to create a very simple Spring Boot web service application. And as a development environment, I will use Spring Tool Suite, but you can use any other development environment of your choice. And this is because I will create my project using Spring Initializer tool. And once the project is created, it can then be imported into any Java development environment that supports Maven. So to create a new project, I will open a new browser window and I will go to start.spring.io to open Spring Initializer. I will not talk in details about how Spring Initializer tool works, but if you are interested in learning how to use Spring Initializer tool, then please check the link to the Spring Initializer tool tutorial that is in the description of this video. Alright, so to make my Spring Boot application to be able to handle HTTP requests and work as a RESTful web service application, I will need to add one very important dependency to my project and it is called Spring Web. So to add a new dependency, I will click on this button, Add Dependencies, and I will look for Spring and then Web, the very first dependency in this list now. I'll click on it and this dependency will be included in my project when I click on the Generate button and download this project to my computer. So this dependency, Spring Web, will bring to our Spring Boot project all the needed Java libraries for us to be able to build a very basic RESTful web service application as well as regular web application using Spring MVC framework. With this dependency, we do not even need an external standalone Apache Tomcat installed on our computer. And this is because this dependency will bring in a default embedded Tomcat servlet container into our project. So we will be able to run our web service application using the embedded Tomcat that comes with this dependency, all right? And this is it. Now I will simply fill in the metadata details here on the left side and I will click the Generate button to generate my new project. So it's going to be Maven project. I will use Java language. Spring Boot version, I will select 2.3.4 and I will provide the metadata. As packaging, I will choose JAR and Java 11 is the Java that I also use on my computer. All right, so my project is ready to be generated and I will click on Generate button here to generate and download this project to my computer. Now I will go to Downloads folder. I will select the project, I will double click on it to unzip it. And now I can go back to my Spring Tool Suite and I can import this project into my development environment. So I will go to File. Import. From Maven, I will select existing Maven project, click on Next, click on Browse button to look for that project. I will go to Downloads folder, select the project I have just downloaded and click on Open button to import it. And my project is imported. Now I will expand it. I will go to Source Main Java and here is my application. To make this Spring Boot application work as a simple web service application, I will need to create a new controller class that will expose a few web service endpoints. So I will select the root package, do right mouse click, choose new class. The name of this controller class should reflect the type of information it is servicing. For example, if you need this controller class to expose web service endpoints that work with user records, then you will call it users controller, for example. Or if you need this controller class to expose web service endpoints that work with photo resources, then you will call it photos controller. And as an example, I will call this controller class users controller, like this. And I will click on finish button. And here's my new controller class. To make this controller class work as RESTful web service, I will need to annotate it with a REST controller annotation. So right above the class name, I will add REST controller annotation. And I will need to import it. Now to make this controller class handle different HTTP requests sent to a particular request URL, I will need to add request mapping annotation. And I will also need to import request mapping annotation. All right. So with this request mapping annotation, this controller class will be involved when my application receives HTTP request sent to a forward slash users web service endpoint. 
Now we will create a very simple method that will handle HTTP GET request when it is sent to a forward slash users web service endpoint. I will make this method return a static string value in HTTP response and I will call this method something like get users. Alright, so when this method is called, it will return a static string HTTP get request was sent. And for this method to be triggered when HTTP get request is sent to forward slash users, I will need to annotate it with get mapping annotation. Like this. And I will need to import get mapping annotation to this class. With this method and with the get mapping annotation, when this controller class receives HTTP get request that is sent to forward slash users web service endpoint, it will return back an HTTP response, a static string HTTP get request was sent. Now, if I want to create a method that handles HTTP post request, that is sent to a forward slash users web service endpoint, then I will create a new method and I will annotate it with post mapping annotation. For example, I will copy this method and I will paste it below and I will rename this method to create user. And for this method to be triggered when HTTP post request is sent, I will use add post mapping annotation. And I will need to import this annotation to my project. Now when HTTP POST request is sent, this method will be triggered and it will return HTTP POST request was sent. To create a method that will be triggered when our controller class gets HTTP DELETE request, I will use DELETE mapping annotation. So again, I will copy one of these methods, paste it here, and I will rename the annotation from POST mapping to delete mapping for it to handle HTTP delete request. And I will rename the method to delete user. And when this method is called, it will return HTTP delete request was sent and I will need to import delete mapping. And finally, to create a method that will be called when HTTP put request is sent to our controller class, I will use put mapping annotation. Now let's run this application and try how it works. So I will select this project, do right mouse click, choose run as Spring Boot application. My application is up and running and to send the HTTP request to my Spring Boot web service application, I will use HTTP client called Postman. So I will start it up. Here it is. First, I will select the type of HTTP request that I want to send. And from this drop down here, I will select HTTP GET method. Now, by default, Spring Boot application starts on port 8080. So the request that I will need to send will need to go to HTTP localhost and then port number 8080 forward slash users. And I have used forward slash users because my controller class is annotated with the request mapping forward slash users. And this is it. Now let's try sending this HTTP GET request by clicking on this button SEND. And I got back as a response HTTP GET request was sent. Now let's try sending HTTP POST. So I will select a different HTTP method from this drop down menu, select HTTP POST and send this request. Now I got back HTTP POST request was sent. I will try HTTP delete and it worked well. And finally, I will try HTTP put request. And it also worked well. I got back HTTP put request was sent. Now, if you want to watch more tutorials like this, then please check the link in the description of this video that will take you to a page with many different short tutorials, just like this one. And if you like this video, please click on the like button.